Hey YouTube, Tim here. What I've got is a 48 inch long piece of 3 quarter inch PVC pipe. No, I'm not making another U3 curve or even another bow. This is the weapon of the week. Or the wow. That's why it says wow in the title in case you're wondering. I'm not just exclaiming my excitement. Although I am very excited. Because what I'm making is a replica from uh, Lord of the Rings. Several people have asked me and have been very excited to see Enduril, the sword of Elisar, or Aragorn. So, that's why I'm starting with a nice long piece of pipe here. And this isn't even long enough. I went on and looked for replicas, and the blade of these swords is about 40, 40 inches long. The blade? That's a long blade. So that only leaves me 8 inches for the handle, and as you know, it's... I've got a very long handle because it's a two-handed sword. Actually, one of the pictures that I took in Istanbul of a German two-handed sword looks very much like Enduril. Anyway, what I'm planning on doing to make up the final four inches is I'm going to insert a, a half-inch pipe in the bottom because the handle also tapers. So I'll sand this down and I'll taper it into the half-inch pipe, which will give me the full proper length. This is still going to be a very, very long sword, and I'm not even going to fully taper it. I could taper it all the way to the handle, and I may. I may. We'll see. But my current plan is only to taper that much of it. I have this, it's roughly, yeah, it's about a two, two foot, some odd inch, uh, two by four. And it's going to leave the base round, but that's okay. Uh, actually, you know, to tell you the truth, this much of it isn't even the blade. The blade starts here. So, <clears throat> that leaves a little over a foot unflattened. What I could do is I could also flatten the middle section and then go and flatten the tip. And I may do that. Again, I'm, I'm not completely sure what I'm going to do with it, but it's going to be one of those two things, and you'll see in the process of this build along what I do, and you can make other choices. Uh, one of the advantages of leaving the base part round is it'll give good, nice lateral stability. It'll be stable in all directions. With The longer the blade, the less stable it's going to be. So if you flatten it, you don't want your blade flopping around. And it's not going to flop exactly, but if it's extremely flat, you do run the risk of making it a little bit on the soft side. And if you're actually planning on practicing and playing around with it, I plan on putting this to good use with my, my family. I want to sword fight my daughter and whatnot. She'll get a kick out of that. So that's my plan. These are my materials. All I've done is I've marked 8 inches from the end. So 40 inches for the blade, 8 inches for the upper handle portion, and then 4 inches, probably with an inch or two inside. So I'll call it a 6 inch section of half inch PVC. Then I'm going to take some more 3 quarter inch pipe later, and I'm going to make the cross guard, which is going to be, again, about 8 inches overall. It'll end up a little bit shorter than that after we finish it. So here we go, starting the flattening. <clears throat> In this case it comes out just to the end of this barcode. So that gives me a good place to stop, and if I need to go ahead and taper it some more after that, that's that lets me know where I can stop heating it. If I'm really concerned, I'd go ahead and mark it with a pencil, but I'm not concerned, so that'll do for now. Well, I'm not really doing anything right now, so I might as well share a recipe with you. This is fun. I just cooked some little Turkish-style meatballs. Pretty good. Okay, it's one pound ground lamb, one egg, a third of a hoagie roll is what I used. Uh, let's see, cumin, about one teaspoon, about one teaspoon of oregano, half a teaspoon, or a little bit more if you like it, of allspice, black pepper and salt to taste. 
and one small to medium sized red onion is what I used. I put all of the ingredients except for the meat and the egg inside a food processor. I went ahead and blended that smooth, not until it's a paste, but until it was, you know, sandy. And then I kneaded it into the meat with the egg. Went ahead and formed that into little balls, meatballs, flattened them out a little bit, and then fried them in a pan. I really would have liked to have grilled them, but they turned out delicious, so... Come to think of it. There they are, remainders. So how's that for an aside for you? <laughs> In other news, one of the plans I have is to start up another channel completely different. Right now I'm doing PVC crafting and stuff over here. That's great. I really am having fun with it. But something else that I've, I'm passionate about that I really enjoy doing is making sweets. That is candy, particularly chocolates. So if you're interested in that sort of a thing, just keep a lookout. I'll notify you all when I open up my new channel and I hope you'll, you'll find it interesting too. Completely different, but definitely, definitely good. <laughs> That's off enough. <coughs> so take this, use that to straighten it, make sure it's straight, and then we go ahead and flatten it. There you go. I like to lean on it myself so that I can apply a little bit more weight and pressure and then I can look at it from the side to make sure I'm happy with the taper and how it's looking. In this case, I'm also going to use my hand on the end just to hold the end up so it doesn't sag. Otherwise, you can heat it and straighten it out later. Not that big of a deal. <coughs> yeah, looking pretty good. Now if you want, move it a little bit, flip it over, flip it the flattening jig, and that'll help to dissipate some heat. Speed up the whole process. Oh, by the way, I'd like to announce that I'm officially over 150 pounds due to my vacation. Everyone should be quite happy for me. Okay, pretty good, nice and straight, 
Excellent. We definitely want this blade to be straight. We're not trying to make a saber here. Although, that is something I want to make, and I think I will soon. The next weapon of the week is probably going to be a rapier, because I've been wanting to do that. It's going to be a half-inch pipe on the longish side, and it's just going to be a conventional straight flattened blade. But the interesting part is going to be not the blade so much as the handle, the hilt, because I'm going to try and do something a little bit more interesting than your usual PVC weapon. Looking snazzy. There you go. Looks pretty nice, looks pretty straight. I'm just going to run it under some hot water. Okay, and by hot water I meant cold water, but it amounts to the same thing. Relative to the PVC, the water is pretty cold, so that worked. Okay, now we have the basic form of the blade. Perfect. Now I can go, so you can see where the taper ends, just there, the little shelf. I'm either going to heat it to smooth that out, or I'm going to go and flatten some of the remainder. Either way, it's going to look pretty good. And that's suitably flat all the way to the end. Because again, we're going to cut off a good bit of that to make the tip of the blade, and then we're going to manually flatten that too. So, thanks for watching this section. Uh, bear with me, and I will continue this later. All right. Thanks for watching. I'm glad you're still here. I know this is a drawn out process, but we're going to do a really nice job this time. So we've got right here the pencil, the blade, which I had gone back and I'd flat, I would reheated the last portion of it, just flattened it out a little bit. It's not perfect, but it looks pretty good now. And uh, yeah, I'm very happy with that. One interesting note I'd like to make is the overall length of it is shorter by a little over an inch, just with that single side tapering. I think if you double sided tapered it, it would be even a tiny bit shorter. So we're talking about you know, losing one inch in 48. It, it may not seem like much, but it's several percent. It's over two percent. So uh, I wonder what the actual tip-to-tip -tip length of the finished bows that I've been making has been. Because I took it, I knew that they shortened. I did not think they shortened that much. I thought I'd lose maybe half inch. Anyway, let's continue because uh, we'll have time for idle discussion somewhere else. I had a piece about six and three quarter inches long. It's a little longer than I needed, but that's okay. I just meant I inserted it a little farther than I needed. The half inch pipe I put in with that's about two inches inside of the three quarter inch pipe and about four and a half outside. So this forms the full finished length of the blade. The handle will start just above my hand here and it will finish just below my hand here. This is a big sword. The next thing we need to do is work on the cross guard. And the cross guard is pretty simple. <clears throat> it is, I'm measuring from the top of the grip to, oh, about two thirds of a thumb up. Very scientific, right? Okay, let's, let's get out the ruler and I'll measure it for you so you can do this precisely. An inch and a half. Call it an inch and a half up from the bottom. Okay, so once we have that measurement, I'm just going to go out and mark it with the mark it with the pencil, and then we can go heat and cut. So <clears throat> here it goes.
was easy. Let's go and we'll cut there. There we go. That's going to be the cross guard. It's going to get a little bit shorter as we flatten it. And we're actually going to flatten and round the tips. So let's go and cut the hole in the center. First we'll have to measure where center is and mark that so we can do the cutting. Okay, right now it's 13 inches side to side. So true center will be six and a half inches in. Be right here. To mark that, I'll mark it all the way around. Okay, now we know where center is. Let's heat it up there and we can go ahead and cut the cut the hole. Starting on one side, let's give it a good cut, about like that. And on the other side. Oh. See, like I said, I'm not very technical. I don't tend to have a lot of practical knowledge relating to good ways to do things. Sometimes common sense fails me and I do silly stuff, so I hope you benefit from that, because I know I do. Great. So now we have one side cut out. I'm going to do the same thing for the top. It looks a little wide. It's wider than the pipe, but remember, it's going to stretch both ways. That'll make the gap shorter. And also, even if it's a little bit wide, that's okay. We're not going to end up pumping it full of hot glue, so I wouldn't worry too much. Let's go ahead and do the same thing for the other side. Now, make sure that it's still warm. the bottom. There we go. So now, let's just keep it hot and just force it on there just to see how, how it'll look. Okay. So bracing the sword against my foot, just grab both sides, slide it on. Pretty darn good this is going to be the finished blade. That's really what it's going to look like. Now all I need to do, uh, there's going to be a compound flattening here. First I'm going to flatten these things side, uh, top to bottom, then the last inch or so I'm going to flatten the other way. So it's going to be up and down. So it'll be thin, 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 fat. You could leave it like this. It looks fine even like it is. This still is a great sword and 
you could very well pass it off as Enduro. I'm going to try and go the extra mile and just try and make it look a little bit more authentic. You do whatever seems right to you. And so that, that's basically where we are. Next step, flatten both limbs all the way to the end. Then I'm going to reheat the last probably, probably two inch and a half, maybe even two inches. And then flatten this one in the, the plane of the blade. So let's get started on that. Now that this is not uh, hot, this might be a little problem to get off, but I'll try. Might have to reheat it just to get it off. Yeah, I think we will. Because the problem isn't here, it's going to be here where it bulges. And I'd like to get it off without cracking it. Well, tell you what, we're going to have to reheat it anyway. So I don't think it's a shame to go ahead and do it a little bit more now. Still not enough. I want to be very careful not to overheat it, and some of these areas are very thin. Overheat them, and this thing will just tear. Okay, here we go. That's that. So now let's heat this sucker up and flatten it. Like I said, the first flattening is going to be like so. The second flattening is going to be like so. One idea I've had that I haven't really tested is to protect some of the areas you don't want to get heated. Let's say we want to keep this full diameter. My idea was to try just taking a little bit of aluminum foil and wrapping this central section. Will it work? Yeah, probably it'll work to a degree. I'm not sure if it'll work perfectly or enough. So I'm not even going to bother trying it right now, but something that does warrant a little bit of investigation in the future. For now, let's just be careful not to heat it up as far as we're able and just to fully heat and flatten one of these. When we're done flattening this, we're also going to cut a little bit out to make it a little thinner and more elegant. Appears to be hot enough, so let's just go and do our duty. Uh, I'd like to heat it a little closer to the handle too. Let's just give it another minute and focus right there. We are going to have to redo the the whole the grip, grip hole section. That's okay. Small price to pay.
what I did is I finished heating it. And here we go. Again, I like to look at it from the side. It just gives you an idea what the taper will look like. It looks very nice. This is almost perfect. I actually just got a call. The reason that my video was interrupted there is because I got a call. I got to go uh, take some stuff somewhere. Which is why I love being able to stitch these videos together on YouTube. So, from your perspective, this will be one nice, cohesive video. Okay. Ah, push. Relocate. And push again. Huh? What's what's that? Yeah, that's what I'm gonna go do in a minute. So once this is cool, we're just gonna repeat this operation on the other side, and then I'll show you how to shape the tips. So I've gone ahead and flattened both sides, like I was saying. Actually, the the center is probably pretty close to what it needs to be to fit on. Now all I'm gonna do is heat the last inch and a half on each side. If you want you can mark that out. I'm just going to eyeball it and then we're going to flatten it like so. Well, there you can't see that. We're going to flatten it like so. So let's get to doing that. You may need to heat as much as two inches, the last two inches, just to get it so that you can flatten it completely. It'll look pretty cool when we're done. As you can see, it's starting to blossom and open up a little bit. I am burning it, you can see, but just very slightly, and I really don't care since we're not making a bow. It's not going to take a lot of stress. Most of this we're cutting away anyway, so... I'm a lot more okay hurrying stuff like this than I am hurrying the, the bows. The bows I definitely try and be careful on because it matters. They're load everything is working and functional. Here it's mostly just there for basic structure. Just to be there, not to bend. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, now we've got the end there heated, nice and soft. Put it sideways and flatten it. Okay. And try and flatten it completely. We will be cutting away a good bit of this just to make it nice and round and circular. Or I guess slightly ovular at the end and we'll be doing the same thing to the other side. Then we'll just be finishing it up. We'll make a little pommel cap for the grip. But after that, it's really just a matter of cutting the tip of the blade and putting it all together, decorating it, painting it, or whatever you have. It's pretty simple, straightforward. Very similar to a lot of the other swords and weapons that we've created. And that's the cool part. You notice a lot of the same techniques. You'll notice a lot of the same things that you're doing. You can modify them. You don't need to do things this way. If you want, you could flatten these pipes completely and just cut it out. You can do all sorts of stuff. Just do whatever feels right to you and experiment. Some ways will work better than others. There's really no right or wrong way as long as you're having fun, right? And I am having a lot of fun. Great. There you go. Here's our, our finished end. Like I say, we're going to end up going and rounding that off. So now it looks nice and thin here. 
and you'll have these flares at the end. It'll look very slick. I'm going to go do the exact same thing to the other side, and then I'll, uh, I'll show you the result. Welcome back. Here's what we're left with. Right now, I've taken the, the main blade and I've tapered the tip. This one I've actually left a little on the sharp side, so I'll probably go around it a little bit later. But for now, that's good enough. The other end I haven't yet capped because I want to slide on the cross guard. And speaking of which, I went ahead and I made the rounded decorations to the sides there. So that's what it looks like. Eventually it'll all be sanded down and probably painted or maybe stained. Or if I'm going to play with it, typically the play ones I leave in the white, you know, just undecorated. Now all I'm going to do is heat it up, slide it on, and then we can hot glue it in place. I took a rat tail file and a flat file to smooth off the inside, all of these edges here, anything exposed. So it's nice and smooth, it feels pretty good. It shouldn't take too much heating because it's already almost the right size. We just want it to get a little bit soft so it's good enough to expand just over that hump right there. Give it a try. There we go. Now we're talking. That's perfect. So after I, I straightened it, or uh, filed away some material, it is a little looser now. So it really does need that hot glue to, to actually take its position and hold it. But there you go. That is the, the basic form of the handle. Thing is looking really nice now I'm pleased I'm just gonna go ahead now and plug in the hot glue gun and let that heat up so the next time you'll see all I'll have done the only difference I'll have done is I'll have nudged this up about an inch like that put a bead of hot glue all around it and then slid this down over it then I'll fill it in on the top so when you uh, check in on this here it is done. did exactly what I said I put on a bead of the glue and then I slid the cross guard onto it it's still a little warm, so I'll give it just another second to cool, but that's the basic thing right there. Looks lovely. I'm really, really thrilled with that, how it turned out. Nice and thin on the sides, flared at the ends, all sanded and looks good. So now we do have this. If I want it totally smooth, you can heat it, put a good amount on there, heat it, and then what I've used is a little bit of saran wrap. Just lay it down on top and smooth it on. Alternatively, a really good way to do it is just wet your finger and pat it down to how you like it. Both of those techniques work really well. The saran wrap will tend to come off onto it, but it leaves a perfect, nice surface. Really, really good. So down here I'm also going to apply a little bit of hot glue just to ease the transition. This area is going to be wrapped up here, and then it'll be tapering from the wrapped portion to the unwrapped portion down below. This will hopefully be black pleather unless I've run out of that, in which case I'll probably use either black duct tape or red pleather. We'll see. Now I'm going to go ahead and heat the tip, and all that's going to entail is just what I said, heating it and just gently pinching it together. That'll cause the base to flare a little bit, which we can fix by going out and sanding it down, but other than that, it doesn't really cause any problems. already starting to touch tips right now. Now as I heat it a little bit more it's going to curve. There we go. And I think we're ready. So I'm set the handle way over on the sink. And bring this over to the block where I can flatten it. I just look at it from the side to make sure I'm flattening it nice and evenly. Flip it too. Very good. 
Now it's still soft, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, run it under some cold water. Cool. So now that looks exceptionally well finished. Like I say, just take the take a flat file and just sand that down, both sides, and it'll look almost perfect. Then I tend to put in a little bit bead of hot glue on either side, just to hold it together and also to protect it and round the edge, just to make it a little softer. And if you actually hit something with it, you don't want to kill it, especially if you're playing around with your family. So, it's really come together. I like the way it looks and feels, and now I just need to go, I'm going to take about an inch and a half of three-quarter inch PVC and I'm going to put it on the end for the end cap which I'm going to then flatten and flare out just like this. That's the, the movie prop shows a, a nice flared grip cap. So we're going to do that and I'll, uh, I'll put that in the next portion. So I finished the sword up. It's uh, still in the naked and in the white but this is basically where I want to take it to. Now I'll play with it and decide if I want to finish decorating it. If I do it's going to be painted metallic, wrapped in the handle. That I will do, because these things really stink after a while to just wield and swing around. It starts to grate on your hands. It doesn't feel nice. So, all I had accomplished, really, since you've seen this last, was I put on an end cap, like I said, about an inch, inch and a quarter, inch and a half of three-quarter inch pipe. I cut it, and then I put it on top. You can see right here is where the half-inch pipe ends, and then I just heated them together and flattened it. That's it. I almost didn't taper, I didn't taper it really with, an, with the, uh, not like this, not the way I did with a saw blade. Because here I took the saw blade and I made a cut, and I made a cut, then I sanded it down. Here all I did was, I sanded it. Because that's, that's pretty much how it's supposed to look. Now, the only other thing I had done, since I heated this, was I applied a bead of hot glue all the way to the end. And I just sanded away the, the bumps on the side. The finished sword. Sword of Aragorn, LSR, the blade. Yep, it's pretty nice. Enduril is a clever, nice looking blade, and I, I'm pretty happy with it. I think it, I've already played around with it a little with my daughter sword fighting, and the only problem is it's so bloody huge, I gotta make sure I don't put a ding in my ceiling or something like that, or I just gotta go outside. Of course, you look like a lunatic running around with this enormous two-handed sword. It's like a bloody claymore or something, which might be a fun build along in, in the future. But it's really, really pretty darn cool. I hope you like the build along. I will do an update for both finishing decorating. There it goes. Finishing decorating Sting and Enduro. I'll do both of those together. Maybe even I'll combine all the decorating videos, because one of the future videos that I'm planning on is Gimli's Axe. Somebody had also asked about that. The next one, the next weapon of the week, is probably going to be a rapier, though. I'm just going to make a pretty run-of-the-mill rapier with a cool hilt. The hilt will really be the special part of it. So thanks for watching, and tune in again. I hope to share a lot more cool stuff with you. Thanks. And if you like this stuff, please subscribe. I appreciate it. And just in case you didn't get a good view of it from the other angle, here it is. The Blade of LSR. Endural. Components, in case you're joining us from this point, were a 40 inch long, four, I'm sorry, 48 inch long, three quarter inch section of PVC. At the end, a one and a half inch section of three quarter inch PVC. The cross guard was, let's call it 10 inches of PVC, which you cut a little bit off of. It's a little bit less than that, but I, I measured it from the end to from the end here, or for, uh, I'm sorry, from the cross guard marker, which was. 8 inches from the end and then about 2 inches. So call it, yeah, it's about 10 inches long. Anyway, I didn't measure it out except in reference to this. It was supposed to be not quite as long as the handle. So that's how I measured it. Then this was a 6 and 6 and 3 quarter inch long half inch PVC pipe. 
And of course, we already talked about that. So that's all we got. Thanks for watching.